Let's see. Let's, I think it's the eighth Corona chat I'm doing. <laughs> Corona Wisdom Factory chat. And today is the 23rd of May. We almost have two and a half months of lockdown and it's getting a little better now. So I'm wondering how um, you have experienced the time. Gudrun, we didn't talk a long time about that and how you feel about, uh, yeah, going to a sort of normal life now. Yeah. But before we do check in, you know, just check in and then mm -hmm. we talk about the topic. Mm -hmm. you, you start. Okay, so I, um, today I feel pretty well. I um, had continuously worked on my coaching program, which I will start next year. And uh, so I will do a, coach training um, um, and certified by DVNLP and um, yeah and I just sent it to the organization and uh, so I need to send it out uh, to the organizer so that we can clarify the, the dates so I'm pretty happy today that I have uh, done something good. <laughs> something productive so and now I'm I'm happy to learn and from you and to have this uh, co-creative talk thank you so Ella do you want to go I can go first so I'm Heidi as always sitting in Italy inside outside today it's really warm nice and warm and um, yeah I met Ella before for lunch we, before we did it sort of clandestine, we ordered uh, the food in the restaurant also to support the people because they, you know, they really didn't have any un income now. And it's one of the restaurants we went regularly, almost every week. And so we ordered the food and then in uh, the terrace of Ella, we are sitting and enjoying to be together with a little Prosecco and I always have my beer my weekly bottle of beer, <laughs> <laughs> indulgence and some, you know, German memory. <laughs> and yeah, we had already talked a lot, but now when you are here, that will be a different um, setting. And I'm really glad to connect you too, because I love connect people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my check-in. Okay, I'm Ella. I live not far from Heidi. I've lived here for ooh, about 12 years um, in Umbria. Before that, I lived in England and before that, I lived in Sweden. And um, um, well, I mean, I, uh, yeah, it's if it, of course, I've been telling Heidi all these things, how the things we've been doing, you know, going through with this coronavirus and the things over and over again and it feels to me as if we've kind of turned a corner somehow you know i don't particularly want to go back to normal at all i'm very happy with uh, no traffic and uh, no airplanes and all this um and so i'm hoping that we're not going to go back to normal I'm sorry for the people who've lost their jobs, but the thing is, I think we need to rethink the whole thing, you know, and there's, uh, and create other things to, to occupy ourselves with, really, than doing the destructive, uh, everyday, what we call normal thing. Um, so I hope, but I, I'm very dubious about it. I do hope it's going to be a lesson this, but I'm very doubtful because I think people are too lazy to want to change themselves. They want to change everything else but themselves. And that's the trouble. Yeah, I just uh, uh, watched the German television, the German news, where they said they want to increase the demand so that uh, the economy can go ahead again. So that was the problem in the past, that they were playing with the demand, 
creating demands which are not really there. So people bought and uh, did things which they really didn't want. You know, it was this sort of manipulation for to increase economy. And as Ella said, in my opinion too, we should go away from that. We do. We should live again just for living and not for getting even more and more, more, more. We should get everything we need, you know, but not, I mean, these things, you know, this one, it's a very, I got it for 150 euros, finally, you know, and it's about three years old, but there are people who buy a new thing every, every year or something, or a new car every year. My car is 12 years old or 13 or something. And as long as it goes, why shouldn't we keep it, you know? So that's my opinion. And so then the change would be in the mindset of everyone. And as long as in media or wherever is the missionary project to entice people to even buy more, even also they don't have, most of them have, don't have money really after three months of not earning. That's for me, it's the wrong, the wrong approach. And so I'm sort of a little bit doubtful about Ella, your, I, your hopes. <laughs> Well, I also read uh, yesterday, and I, I mean, because I'm a pensioner, I have my income, you know, uh, because we're spending less. And there are, uh, there is a, a, a strata of the population that's actually better off, financially even, because they're spending less. Especially people with, uh, I suppose, on, on a fixed income, you know. Uh, it's difficult for people who live week to week, like in America, a lot of people do. Um, and they and they are queuing up for food banks in their massive luxury cars, and to me to see that on television, it really brought it home to me what a bizarre society we have. People can have a, a big, really, what in my opinion, luxurious car, and they can't afford to buy food. But gasoline, obviously. But that doesn't cost anything anymore. Toilet paper is worth more than gasoline. <laughs> and the disinfection jail. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's really crazy. I mean, in the beginning, I was, um, I was very hoping and, and um, excited about the situation because I thought, oh, now we have a chance to change. Now we have uh, the opportunity to rethink our, what we have done in the past and what we want, especially what we want to have in the future. But nobody is talking about the future. Nobody uh, starts um, um, expressing a vision how Germany, how the EU, how Italy should be look like. I mean, Macron, when he started uh, as a president in France, he expressed his vision. And now I haven't heard anything from him, not, not even from him. So, and, um, and this is uh, what I'm a little bit worried. And then I find out when they start giving so much money, especially in Germany, um, um, to the people, but not, they always said, they give it to the economy, they help the economy. And I always thought, no, you need to help the people, not the economy. If you give money to the people, then you can give everybody the same amount. Even if they, if they still are work because they're system relevant, or um, then they earn to get more money. And um, or if they have no job at all right now because uh, there is no, there are no flights, there are no, uh, no big traffic, then, then of course they need to have some money. But they have so many different rules who get money. So I'm self-employed and I don't get anything because I do not have any, any, um, um, outgoing money for 
maybe for um, for an office or something. So I have only my personal um, um, expenses, and uh, and therefore I don't get any direct help. But what I have learned, I could order a Grundsicherung. So this is that I I'm the same as someone who never has worked before or has not worked for a long time. And I found out first thing that I thought, okay, then I do this. And then I found out that I'm a little bit too proud to do this. So I, so I really think, is, do, I, do I really need to do this? Do I? So it's, uh, that was very, very interesting, the feeling that I had, to, and I haven't done it yet. So tomorrow, uh, on Monday, I will have with my tax account, I will have a discussion and then I will find out if, if, I, if I will do it or not. But um, I mean, as soon as I get a new, um, 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 so I get a new of, um, order, uh, for example, for a training that I could give, um, even if it's online, um, then I might earn more than I could get for um, for Grundsicherung for one month. So, it's, and that is it's really strange. Yeah, what I find really strange is uh, in this moment, everybody should get some money and not the uh, airlines who get milliards uh, uh, no, for, for everything. And you know, if everybody gets uh, at least the possibility to survive, you know, we say basic uh, income, if that, that would be the perfect situation to, ha to begin with that, because then nobody has to go to steal for food. I know, for instance, here, I, I know, don't know, Ella, if you know that, but uh, artists get something, but only artists who are working for some enterprise, you know, mm. for instance, for the television or who have a, a contract with an opera or with mm. somebody else. But the little artist who is working by themselves, they don't get anything. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, the it's poor insane. ones are really the losers. Yeah. And so if uh, there was the general income, the basic income, everybody would not be in this fear of not surviving because I really uh, see in front of us in the next few years that people come and uh, uh, break into the houses because they, they are hungry. Mm -hmm. And this shouldn't be. I mean, you, when you give money to the, to the people, they will take care for to revive economy because when they have money, they can also buy something. But to give money to the car fabrication or for the air, airlines, why, why, why? Yeah. If an airline dies, it dies, there are enough others. I mean, and we don't might, we might not go in airplanes so often anymore, so they die anyway. Why these milliards, I don't know how you say in English it, uh, Ella, milliards. Billions. Billions. Billions of, of, uh, of money in, in the airlines. Why? I mean, there are people working, yes, but they would get the basic income too. So they, they wouldn't uh, be fearful to, to die of hunger. So, and ha with the billions, how many people you can give a monthly uh, basic income? A lot of people, you know, instead of saving a few stakeholders of airlines. Mm. That's... Yeah. Well, the, the, the normal uh, argument is that we haven't got any money. Uh, but when you look at things, there's so much money in the world, you know. How much money do they spend in the arms industry, for instance, to, to produce weapons, uh, you know, that can kill people? Loads and loads and loads. And then also, why do you need so many car manufacturers anyway? You know, why can't you... And, and so many airlines... You know, it's just no. It, it's completely ridiculous. The whole thing. Yeah. Uh, I think you should you should really slim down. You know, and maybe allow three sorts of cars: small, small, medium, and large. And that's it. <laughs> but then you know, every car is different. 
And when your, your headlight breaks, you have to spend money because only that particular make takes that one and so on and so forth. Yeah. It's, there's, so much, there's so much waste around. The other thing is, I don't know if they actually give money or do they give loans? Because if they give loans, that is even worse because then people remain in debt. Yeah. And that's uh, the way to really sort of uh, um, entrap them forever and ever. You know, that's even even worse than not giving them anything, you know, in, the, in a way, really. I mean, it abuse the situation for, for manipulation. In but many who ways. is they? I mean, the, 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 as the system is uh, composed, the money system, with loans and uh, interests and so on and so on. No? I mean, I heard now from Brazil, is it no, Argentina, which is about to be bankrupt again. Why can't we just say, okay, you cannot pay it back. Let's the whole world go to zero and start from here again. Why can't they agree on that? I think they have not the mindset to do so. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, it, we, we see much further than many of the polit politicians. That's, uh, I think that is, um, that is also the, um, the situation that makes me afraid because uh, if our politicians are not wise and not uh, thinkers in the long term and they, see, they seem not to listen to consultants who have this mindset, then, uh, then we get back to normal like before and then we have really the situation that a lot of uh, people are getting poorer and poorer and we have a lot of uh, scissor for the, the very rich ones and the very um, poor ones and and um, and especially in Germany when they created this direct help um, I also understand okay you give money to self-employed people so that they can pay their rent for the office or for their car or for everything but they give the money to people who have already money to the economy they give it back to someone who has so much money that they can offer rooms rent cars and whatever so so it makes really no um it is not helpful to to renew our our world and um, I was so hopeful and now so I always go through this um, Berg und Talfahrt <laughs> so this um, the circle so I don't know um, I have so many ups and downs crash states coach states and uh, the last week, I, or the last two weeks, I could uh, uh, do a lot of coaching. So I helped myself while I was helping others because I always got into coach state and I recreated uh, a good mindset, created new possibilities for my coaches. And uh, that was very um, helpful for me to think optimistically on the other hand, I did the coachings because I'm in a coach training right now. So I offered the coachings for free in order to have enough coaching experience to get certified. <laughs> so from, from, from my personal situation, it was not so helpful <laughs> um, to get uh, something to make my living. And, um, but uh, yesterday, that is something I need to tell you because yesterday I'm, I'm living in Bavaria and we are a little bit behind the rest of Germany. Uh, and we have still, our restaurants are locked and we can only have a meal outside the first week that we could have this. And, um, and we are not, still not allowed to have our um, um, trainings running because they are not in a not for one company or something but it's for private people so we are not allowed to have this but yesterday i did a training day a normal personal training day outside with a lot of distance and 
all the people were so happy. We have met several times online and now it was the first day that we have been met in person and we had a perfect classroom. It was not too sunny, but it was very warm and uh, so we felt very, very well and blessed. <laughs> yeah, we start to appreciate the little things which before we thought they are normal and they are we have a right to that, you know, so it's really good. Yeah, we, we are noticing it. And yesterday I was in a, in a breakout group of uh, uh, Otto Sharma. Um, um, he has ongoing meetings. Oh. And um, now I've lost my, my thread, what I wanted to say about that. Oh, no problem. Maybe it comes comes back. Anyway, there are a lot of people who have, who are trying to, to change something and, you know, in thousands and probably even in millions. But, ah, yeah, we were talking about what to, how can we, who have these insights and we think at least that we are right, you know, uh, how can we influence people who, uh, in these other spaces who want to go back, who want to be everything as, as before and who, who don't realize that we need to take care for nature. We need to, to, to do different things. We cannot uh, cut down all the trees. We cannot, you know, continue as we do. And it's, we said today, Ella, it is 70 years or something that we know all that and it is instead of gone better i always thought it would go better now that we know it it has gone worse so how can we improve our communication skills to talk with people who have no idea you know who think that's normal and that should be like this and to open their minds for the real issue which is behind all that because there was uh, the talk of Fridjof Capra. I don't know if mm. you remember, he, he wrote the Tao of Physics, which I read about 20 or 30 years mm -hmm. ago. And he yes. said, the, the virus is a thing which normally sticks with animals and these animals don't have a problem with it. And the jumping over to, uh, to humans is also caused because the humans are invading the spaces of the animals. The animals don't have enough uh, room for living. And so um, things like that happen. And if you want them not to happen, you have to, to abandon your idea of being able to do everything you like. Mm -hmm. But take your place in nature and that's not being everywhere. <laughs> you know, I found that very, very true. Yeah, true. I mean, since we have always um, all of this, almost the same view on the things, it's not so easy to discuss something from different perspectives. And I would really be glad to talk to someone who has a different view. Um, but uh, when I talk to people, it seems that they have almost the same view, or at least. Um, it's um, it's almost the same, um, or you are in a uh, in a setting where you cannot confront the people because you come together uh, for different things. Like um, like last time, I met some people uh, who might have a different view on on things, but we were together. Um, for a different topic. So I hadn't had the chance to bring the theme on subject on how we should live after Corona. Maybe we should just go into here in Italy, there are the bars where you have a coffee mm -hmm. and just uh, talk with people. I never do that. I'm always in my bubble, you know, it's much yeah. easier to talk with you, you know, and mm -hmm. my neighbor who is, uh, I told Ella also, that he's always, in the idea of cleaning the land, he's always uh, plowing and opening the, the grass so that the earth is always uncovered. And that's the worst thing you can do, you know? 
mm. because the, the earth wants to be covered to keep uh, everything, you know. Mm. And there's one neighbor here, the downstairs neighbor. Uh, when he when I came here and he began to plow up to my ground, before the the ground mine was like this, let's say, and then it went down to to his. And now mine looks like this, and then it goes down like that because mm -hmm. you always plowed, and so the erosion is doing these things. And at the beginning, I tried to talk to him. There was no way. And mm -hmm. maybe I should try again to talk with this sort of people. But how? Because mm -hmm. when we come and are the missionaries and say we know it better, that doesn't work. So mm -hmm. how can we reach the, the people here in the very practical uh, surrounding to to make them aware that what they are doing for habit is not the best thing to do for the, for the planet and not even for their own land, you know. <laughs> but there must, be, there must be a reason why they do it. I mean, they think that they do something good. No, but they think it's pulito, it's, it's, it's clean. So that's for them the, the idea of cleaning. Oh, okay. So you know, this... Hmm. It's just an, an idea that's not mm -hmm. really, there's no real reason behind mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But doesn't he realize that uh, there is now this break, this gap? Oh, he doesn't care. Ah, okay. As long as it's clean. Yeah, the fence was like this and now it's fallen down. You know, mm -hmm. but that's what it is. It's clean. Mm -hmm. And that's also because this particular neighbor, he is a, was a factory worker and his wife was a cleaning lady mm. and she was there for a woman who when this woman died she left her a, a, a flat in this in the village and also this land and so this guy like many guys they discover to go on the tractor no and they like to go on these <laughs> <laughs> things. And so he uses every occasion to sit on this thing and do, does something. So it's yeah. not for the land, it's for, you know. <laughs> well, it's fun, yeah. <laughs> because it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Now, but the real uh, uh, question is how to talk with people. How can we up-level our, our communication skills to which we are quite able to do among each other, but to talk with other people? who have not the same mindset. That's what I'm concerned with in the last few weeks. Yeah, but you know, I'm also a little bit worried because I tried to talk to my sister who is following these, uh, these very suspicious theories and I don't know. So, and, um, does not want to listen because I'm just a younger sister, I think. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. But, but it's a good idea just to start going out, drinking a cup of coffee, talk to other people, being co um, conversational and um, listen to people, what they are thinking and try to ask questions to, uh, to bring them to other ideas. So Ella, next time we, when, when, when the, the times are more normal, we go to the bar at Torquato and try to talk with people. <laughs> um, well, I know, but I mean, I, it seems to me that the majority of the people that I speak to, but maybe as you say, Gudrun, the people you talk to are people who are of the same mind, you know, anyway. Mm -hmm. Don't have friends who have a totally opposite view on everything because they wouldn't be your friends then. It's mm -hmm. like you, know, you think, well, I don't know anybody who voted for Trump or I don't know anybody who voted for Salvini in Italy, you know, but mm -hmm. somebody must have done, you know, but I don't know anybody. Or maybe they do it in secret, I don't know. Mm. The thing is, in, in Italy, I found, um, the, 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 because I do, I do get involved in, uh, I would call it almost arguments with people on one particular topic, and that's um, immigration. Mm -hmm. Because that's something you hear a lot about in bars. Um, and I find it really difficult not to interfere, you know, when they talk about that. Um, you know, and, but it's really, it, it, 
they are so narrow-minded they don't uh, they don't really see you know i mean and then i can say so you mean that i shouldn't be here either and then they start to think oh well uh, well you know you you don't think i can be here because i'm not black you know what are you talking about it's um the people who are so narrow-minded that it's really difficult to get through to them somehow mm -hmm. i found and and this is this is something now that with about especially about immigration because that's uh, now they talk about the virus i suppose a lot but before they usually talk about immigration, you know, and everybody can't come here. And I say, well, everybody isn't coming here, you know, what, uh, 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 and so on. <laughs> and they are, I don't know, they are, uh, but I think, I think most people realize now that nature has actually started to recover a bit. And I think they know why they must do. How can they be so blind? And the weird thing is, if we don't do anything for to regain a balance in nature, which will take some decades, mm. the migrations will overrun us because they have to flee from the countries where they don't find mm. food anymore, you know. Mm. So that's also short-sighted. That's the one of the things I'm really preoccupied that we have, we, people don't think through the things they um, uh, think, oh, this is now the solution. Green deal, we do all wind uh, mills and so on. Then we have the resolved everything and we have a little less uh, carbon emission and then everything is fine. It's not, no. there are so few many other things. Yeah. And that's the problem that they, people f are fixated on one thing, migration or, or you know, whatever, CO2 or whatever. And then they think when this is fixed, then everything is fine. So they, they really should, we, we need to, to, and this is a fault of the media, to, to tell them that that's much more complex than they think. That's mm -hmm. not just one thing in which we can fix and then everything is, is beautiful. Yeah. That's not. But, you know, I, I watched a discussion in the evening with people who really should, should be or are known as forward thinkers. And uh, for example, Frank Thelen, I don't know, he's an investor in, um, in startups and he was, had, self, had himself uh, grown as um, multiple startups. And, and he uh, was, why didn't we have it from the beginning on community masks? So we shouldn't have had this. And uh, the politician starts in the, in the beginning and he said, well, I can only quote um, someone, uh, another po politician who had said, if we have, would have known everything in the beginning, we would have done everything right. And, uh, and so this, <clears throat> this, this uh, um, businessman, he, he uh, asked the question, several times and was retrospective oh we could have should have done these masks in the beginning from the beginning on even if the the medic um, the the physician the woman who is, was a virologist biolo said well in the beginning we hadn't this in our mind that we could build community masks because we only saw that the masks are needed by the professionals Mm -hmm. And uh, so we could not afford to give some to the to the people, and even and especially when we know that these masks couldn't uh, help them, but you know, but and the community masks now they had uh, had make a shift with these community masks that uh, you only wear them like a courtesy for other people, and uh, and not to, uh, to to help yourself. And um, and so that is a complete mindset, mind, uh, mind shift in the mindset, and uh, and this businessman doesn't uh, doesn't uh, get it, you know. That's typical masculine, no? That thinks Absolutely. you can plan everything, and you should have planned even yeah. if you couldn't yeah. know. And there was another man who knows very well. Uh, people from these um, 
um, he is uh, very good in cybercrime and, and knows everything about uh, inner security. So inner Sicherheit, he's an expert for this. And he was also this, had this approach Oh, we should communicate directly to the people what they need to do. And so we cannot communicate. Oh, we don't know. We don't know. Of course, we need to tell them we don't know because, mm -hmm. because we can only give trust to the people when we take them along and say, okay, we need to go step by step. And, and in my impression, the, in, the, in the normal, in the official television, they do a lot of things and they try not to get people too much worry and to take them with them. But there are so many people who only listen to the other, to the private news, and they only look for um, horror stories and where they can complain. And, and this is something we need to focus to, um, yeah, to bring to take people with us and to bring them in another mindset, looking forward. What do you really want to experience? And I think that would be a very good talk about what we could have here in, in this situation. What do you want to see in the future? How do you want to live? In which kind of world? Do you really want uh, no planes anymore if you come from a foreign country and live now in, in Italy? I yeah. think... No, I don't, I don't say I don't want no planes, but mm -hmm. I don't want to have thousands of planes every day. So if I have to go somewhere, and maybe from here to, from Rome to Frankfurt, and there are 10 possibilities a day, mm -hmm. I know it's enough that there are two, mm -hmm. you know, and <laughs> things well, like Rome, that. Rome to Frankfurt, you could have a train actually quite easily, right across Europe, you could have trains, you know. Yeah, but when they, I was mm. when I went to Frankfurt, the trains were not in the in the in the in the, in, the, in, the, in the, the, the existing trains, so mm -hmm. that I could be there in time, and mm -hmm. that I could uh, take a train to be here uh, overnight and come back home. So I always would have had an extra night, two extra mm -hmm. nights uh, staying there. Mm -hmm. So that's then the decision for for the airplane, but that doesn't mm -hmm. speak to airplane or train. It speaks mm -hmm. that it is not, the, the, the airplanes um, have more possibilities than the trains. The trains mm -hmm. are, have been neglected a lot mm -hmm. in, the, in the last well, time. Well, obviously because airplanes uh, help the oil industry. Mm -hmm. uh, trains mm -hmm. don't, you know. Yeah. It's just that you have to reorganize public transport completely mm -hmm. from the bottom up. Everywhere, in my opinion, because that's the thing. My, I think Olivia said today, I think she said it was free to go on buses in, in London now. Mm -hmm. And also everybody's cycling everywhere because there's no traffic, so they're cycling. Yeah. You know, you, you have to find either <clears throat> other solutions. And, and the trains, Europe is really a small space. If you have proper trains, uh, fast, you know, you don't have to have these super fast, you know, but trains that go between places, uh, in a sensible way and don't cost more than the aeroplanes, which is what they do now as well. Yeah, this is uh, that's the problem, yeah. Exactly. And this would be a political question, no? And not a systemic uh, question for either airplane or train. That's, mm. that's not the question. Mm. It's how to, you know, if I could go uh, overnight, take a, a night train, which is quite, you know, not too expensive, and start here in Orte and uh, go to Munich and from there to Frankfurt and arrive in the morning. Perfect. But if there is not, so I have to go with the train first two hours to the airport, then walk. <laughs> I counted the steps. It was crazy. A day in the airport is 12,000 steps, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in both airports, you know, and then in the other airport, take another train. And it's really, it's really crazy. But so you can put it in one day, you know, you can uh, start in the morning and be there in the early afternoon or in, uh, at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. And because you, I couldn't go uh, with uh, the other trains, if I took a night train or something, especially on the way back, no way. You know? But it doesn't speak against trains. No, it's... it's 
it's not that they need to be more comp um, compatible to each other in all. And, and I mean, we have this uh, artificial intelligence uh, and uh, which we could use to, to rework on a, on a plan for this. And a what? On a, on a plan, on a map. Uh, yeah. How, uh, what would be the best ways? Because uh, this, this Google or this, this, this Apple Maps and so on, we have every, every information that we would need um, to, um, to make a good um, uh, plan and a good, um, um, for the, uh, a good roadmap for the trains. You know, also private cars. If there was a possibility with a, an app to mm -hmm. say, okay, I now go from Otricoli to Perugia. Mm -hmm. Who needs to go just mm -hmm. now? Uh, and you know, and then you pick up the people and you go together and you have mm -hmm. some arrangement that mm -hmm. they contribute. So not everybody has to go one person in the car in the same, to the same place. Yeah, this but it already exists. I've used it. Mm -hmm. It already exists. It's called the blah, blah car. Yeah, the blah blah car is. Yeah, is I've used it in France and I have a friend who's used it in Italy. It's called blah blah yeah. car. But mm -hmm. also, I have another friend who lives in Rome and she's actually sold her car because you can now rent a car fairly cheaply, not like a normal rental. It's, it's just, you know, you pick it up where you want to and then you take it back. And it's not as expensive as a rental car. So it's a kind of, it's a kind of car share scheme. So they are starting these things. You oh, know, that's good. Mm -hmm. Get used to using them. Mm -hmm. That's good. The yeah, blah blah cars is is very good. You know, they have you just put on their website where you want to start from and where you want to go to, and it's cheap, very cheap. So it's a, it's. A, I went to somewhere in France with a guy, and that way he had four people in the car. And so he, his petrol didn't cost him anything for he was traveling for work, you know, and uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, I knew it from before from Germany, you no know, Mitfahrtzentrale. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when I was still working at the German school, then uh, from Italy, it was very little, very few. So mm -hmm. we in the school, we did the announcement who, who mm -hmm. needs to go uh, somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it is also a long term, you know. What I'm talking about is really short term. So I, mm -hmm. I decide this morning I go, I don't know, to Florence. Mm -hmm. Who from the area here or on the way wants to go to Florence? And so we, mm -hmm. we go together, things like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are possibilities. But this is really something you need to, um, um, to schedule. You cannot say, oh, in the morning I go to Florence, who else wants to go and has no car? I mean, there are a lot of people who wants to do that when they have a car and to take someone with them. But, uh, but uh, who, um, how should the people who have no car know that they would have an opportunity and could schedule their day um, in Oh, well, That's uh, not so, so difficult. Shortly. You just have a list of people, a list of people on some website mm -hmm. and they say they want at this time of the day, they want mm -hmm. to go there and there and then mm -hmm. you connect with them. I go, what do you want to go mm -hmm. with me? It's a logistical uh, uh, question and they should be able to, 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 to do that. I mean, so, the more people uh, work from home, there should be more flexibility to do these things. Yeah, 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 yeah. things like that. Well, if, you, if you go on Blah Blah Car and you say, you want to go from Narni or maybe Narni, mm. you might have to, because they have a pick-up point, because mm. my grandchildren have used it, they have a pick-up mm. point on the motorway uh, in Orte, for instance, you see that kind okay. of place, you know, mm -hmm. because people come from Rome or Naples and they drive through the motorway and then they stop up mm -hmm. there and, put, mm -hmm. and, and take people and then you carry on to Florence. And so you go on the website and you put where you want to start and where you want to finish and then okay. you... You get all the people who posted their trips on that already. And I remember the bus has help, um, an, a kind of concept now because they want to be competitive to Blabla. Bla. Because uh -huh. Blabla Bla has also buses, so mm -hmm. they were comp uh, competitors to Flixbus. Ah. So Flixbus mm -hmm. is also um, um, going into this section as well. 
So. Mm -hmm. And that would be a real good uh, market uh, uh, development that there is a competition between small enterprises and mm -hmm. not just one big one who is dictating mm -hmm. uh, how things are, mm -hmm. are going. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. is part of the vision. Yeah, or organized by the community so that they do not need to make profit, but they need to make, uh, um, I mean, they need to earn money so that they can afford themselves the service. But, um, but why do we need a profit center uh, for a hospital or something like this? So that is something we need to rethink um, in which situations and for which services we do not need a profit uh, centers and uh, which, uh, which services does anybody need? So, and that's the healthcare, water, electricity, and, um, uh, and, and of course, um, public, uh, public uh, trains and... Um, some you know what, when I came to Italy 30 years ago, mm -hmm. in the bakery, there were certain kinds of bread, which was very cheap, and it was uh, limited in the price mm -hmm. for cheap, for poor people, you know? Mm -hmm. That has gone, I don't see it anymore. Mm -hmm. So also food should be, uh, certain food uh, categories should be cheap, mm -hmm. uh, you know? And the rest, if you want others, you, you buy others, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, things like that, so that everyone can afford to survive. <laughs> Yeah, but for example, this is uh, reworked food. Um, you could have, this is, this is something generative. Uh, you, you could um, have um, higher prices for food which is, uh, is, is, uh, which is um, reworked, comes from machines, come, comes from the indus industry like chips and, and uh, uh, yogurt with, uh, with uh, uh, different flavors and so on. So, and anything uh, which is um, is not uh, natural should be very expensive, and so they can uh, support the um, the normal food. And the regional food should be uh, really really inexpensive, so that uh, also the poor people can buy it and can afford to to have uh, natural food. Sometimes it's uh, cheaper real, to. Real. I just want to finish. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, the chips are cheaper, and uh, so more pe more poor people buy chips instead of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to say uh. that the weird thing is that the reworked food costs less than the natural food. Yeah, and this is yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And you see, that's why this, they say coronavirus goes to show that we're all in it together. We're not all in it together, because if you look at the statistics, in, especially in America, where there is such a difference uh, between rich and poor, yeah. and people who, who have poor health and people who have you know, okay health, uh, it's, the, it's usually the people from immigrant communities that are overweight because they eat fast food, they live off fast food because it's cheap, you know, but it's also their, I suppose, choice. I don't know why they do this. Uh, and they're really unhealthy and they are dying far more than any other group uh, of, of person from the virus. Yeah, that's a lot of, uh, I think the, the summary of the conversation, that's a lot more to it than just a virus. The virus is only, could be the incentive to look at it and to, to do other choices and to go in a different direction. And I do so much hold the space for that to happen, but I'm not very hopeful, at least not now. It might come after a while and it might get much worse before it gets better. Now, when, if we were uh, with, wise, if we had wisdom, we could take it now and create something new without too much suffering. 
you know, mm -hmm. but I fear that the suffering will increase not by dying from a virus, but by dying from yeah, no food, for instance, or shooting mm -hmm. or something like mm -hmm. that. And you know, this money thing is just virtual. We don't have the money at all, you know. It's only numbers in, in our virtual bank account. It's not even that we have this small booklet that we had in the past. <laughs> and, uh, and they want now with this virus thing, they also want to make us to use more our, our credit cards and, and other cards. So because it is more clean, more hygienic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Completely, yeah. it's... Uh, Unbelievable, and and I have um, have followed several other people who knows a little bit about bank system and, and money system, and they said some years ago already that uh, we need to stop having our cash because otherwise the system will crash. It, it's going on only if we use only virtual money because they can blow it out <laughs> and blow it up. I mean, otherwise yeah. we wouldn't have this billionaires and, and so on, that many. But on the same time, you, uh, you get, get completely surveyed. Whatever you do will be uh, documented because you can have no sovereignty anymore about your, yeah. uh, about your uh, what, what, what you want to do, you know. With cash money, you can yeah, you are an anonymous and have a sort of a, a, a freedom, you know. But yeah. with the other money, not. And the people who are, for instance, getting uh, standing in front of the supermarket to get an euro, you know, mm -hmm. or something, they don't have a bank account. And most people of, of this uh, class of uh, society, mm -hmm. they don't get a bank account because they don't have a income they don't have anything and they cannot pay with a card so you exclude mm -hmm. them again mm -hmm. and there's several reasons i don't agree actually i have now to respond to the telephone okay okay <laughs> so yeah but um i mean i think they they don't think so much about the, the poor ones uh, they think more that uh, or they have this um what is the opposite of trust? Mistrust. Mistrust. Okay, so that's easy. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. the German. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so they have this mistrust again, uh, the richer people, and, and especially like the mafia or so, that they try to wash the money. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's why they want to get up. Hmm. They want the to have the, the cash. But it's you know what? I think these people, when they have a different system, they find a way to wash know. the money in that different system. So that's, that's, that's yeah. not an argument. It's just, <laughs> no, it's not, but uh, they try to tell us this. <laughs> but, and, and this shows that we need to come into a trust and to give trust in advance to get trust. And uh, trust and uh, transparency that is something we need. Yeah, and we need also trustworthy people. You know, you cannot give trust in somebody who is not trustworthy. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, I have uh, seen. Uh, if, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, um, I just uh, found uh, today there was a nice um, drawing and Trump was on, on the Titanic. <laughs> so and uh, it was all already thinking you have seen it already oh that was so funny so there is no iceberg oh there is an iceberg but in another ocean <laughs> oh there is an iceberg in our ocean but it is melting fast <laughs> it will not hit the iceberg oh we have hit the iceberg but we have <laughs> floats <laughs> beautiful floats <laughs> Yeah, so on. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, I think we need to hope in a reincarnation uh, of trustworthy people who will take over <laughs> leadership, you know. 
We I mean, need to show ourselves. We just talk to each other, being still in the in the back, mm. and uh, so that is something we need to find out. How can we go and how can we open our voice? How can we go into the public to yes. to get heard? I mean, yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't want to be in the front of, of a lot of people. I'm too introverted. On the other hand, um, and I'm, I'm sometimes I'm much too emotional. That's why I choose to stay a little bit back. But but uh, sometimes it makes me crazy because I think I have no more knowledge than these people <laughs> who are on the. Yeah, I do think we we need maybe to think and. To go out despite we don't feel ready mm. sometimes yeah. i think so or at least yeah. support people who are doing it yeah. and uh, instead of fighting them but mm -hmm. uh, because not everything is like we think but mm -hmm. we we should uh, give them trust and support yeah. them it's true yeah yeah maybe that's the that's a sense mm. yeah we have to connect and see who we can support in this who is showing up who who yeah you know. So that is a good ending. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> I have to stop now because the yeah. the Fabro, the Smith is coming yes. finally <laughs> after three weeks. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. With the Fabro. <laughs> okay. Was was great talking to you. Nice to and, see you. And nice you, Gudrun. Nice <laughs> to speak to you too. <laughs> bye, bye, bye 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 bye, bye. bye.